Ace was criminally nerfed by the author of One Piece. That's right, I said it. Because honestly, looking at what we know about Ace, he had the potential of becoming one of the strongest characters in the entire story. However, because Luffy is the main character, Ace not only never got to show his true powers even once, but he even of course had his life brutally cut short. However, let's pretend for a second that this never happened and instead instead figure out what might have happened if Ace had actually reached his full potential. Because picture this, 17 year old Ace becomes a pirate, he gets his fire devil fruit and starts to make a real name for himself in the pirate world. He literally travels the entirety of the Grand Line going from places like Fishman Island all the way to Wano where he rescued children from Kaido's castle. Seriously, even though we barely ever get to see it in the story, this man was the definition of that guy. And before he even turned 20 years old, he defeated a warlord and fought another one for five whole days. But then, what happens next in the story destroyed Ace's chances of becoming Pirate King forever. Because then, Whitebeard showed up, beat down Ace, and basically forced the fiery young pirate onto his own crew. Now initially, without any doubt, this kind of worked out pretty well for Ace. He found the family that he always wanted and pretty much was happy all until his death at Marineford. But, and this is a very big but, Ace joining Whitebeard's crew was basically a death sentence to his chances at growing stronger because at this point he didn't really have to struggle on his own anymore at all. So yeah, basically becoming an underling of the world's strongest man definitely killed Ace's true potential. But that's all in the past now because let's imagine that Ace's story went in a completely new direction. In the original story, Ace fought the former warlord and current straw hat Jimbei for five days before Whitebeard then showed up to interrupt them. So instead of that, let's imagine that Ace actually defeats Jimbei sooner and then he and his crew sailed away before the Yonko ever arrived to wipe them all out. Or if that is too unreasonable for you, maybe Whitebeard does show up and beats down Ace, but instead of inviting him onto the crew, maybe Whitebeard recognizes Ace's potential and just lets him go. And of course, if that happens, happened, then Ace would be absolutely furious that he couldn't defeat Whitebeard, which means he's now going to want to get even stronger than he already did. Maybe he'll just continue to train regularly on his own or even seek out someone to help him reach the next level. Either way, here's the deal. And so Ace is now around 20 years old and let's say that after some more time on his own, he's now learned the basics of armament and observation hockey since that was for some reason never actually confirmed in the story, so technically Ace is now already stronger than he was in the actual storyline. And so now you might be asking what then could be Ace's goal since he isn't part of Whitebeard's crew anymore and the answer I think is quite simple because if you read the Ace novels, which you should absolutely do if you haven't, then you should know that his main goal after entering the Grand Line was to defeat all the Emperors. He even burned down Whitebeard's flag on Fishman Island when the Spade Pirates passed through on their way to the New World. So everything that Ace does at this point will be to grow stronger so that he can actually take on and defeat the Yonko. Before we go any further though, let's recap where we are timeline-wise at this point. Because right now, Ace has been a pirate for around three years, which is the same time that Luffy starts his own adventure as well. However, there are now some serious Serious changes to the story since Ace didn't join Whitebeard. Basically, the whole Marineford saga is completely cut out of the story because that entire plotline started when Ace insisted on hunting down Blackbeard because he betrayed Whitebeard's crew by backstabbing this guy here. And so this time around, Ace doesn't even know him and doesn't care, so there's no getting captured by Blackbeard. Although in this case, Blackbeard might actually end up going after Luffy a lot harder, even more so than he already did, but Luffy he already escaped from Blackbeard the first time, so I'm not going to assume that the wannabe emperor would catch Luffy in the first place here. Plus, Whitebeard wouldn't come to Marineford as well to save Luffy anyway, so there wouldn't be a giant battle unless Shanks or Luffy's father came to save him as well. But we're kind of getting off track here. This video is about Ace, not about Luffy. At least yet. But what all of this means is that Whitebeard will still be alive. However, that won't last for long because let's assume that after the years of extra training, Ace 
finally feels like he is ready to take on Whitebeard. And so the Spade Pirates roll up and challenge the Emperor. And while Ace's crewmates might get completely wiped out, let's be honest, I do think that Ace would be strong enough at this point to actually take out Whitebeard because remember, Whitebeard is still really, really sick. And the longer he's in the story, the worse his condition is about to get. But he is still incredibly powerful, of course, and it would be a legendary fight with Whitebeard's tremor powers against Ace's supercharged fire blast. And during that fight, I can easily see Whitebeard being reminded of his clashes with Roger while fighting Ace, which might actually lead to Ace revealing that he is actually Roger's son. And can you imagine that? Like that single fact alone would just completely blow Whitebeard's mind and it is going to change the rest of Ace's story forever. Because let's just imagine that after an exhausting battle, Ace finally defeats the sick Whitebeard, but because of the respect they gain for each other, Ace spares Whitebeard's life. However, this is where things turn dark, because just like at Marineford, in this scenario, I can very easily imagine Blackbeard swooping in and finishing off Whitebeard to steal his devil fruit. And since the Emperor and Aza just had their big exhausting battle, it makes a lot of sense to me that Whitebeard and his crew wouldn't be able to fight them off. So I do see Blackbeard once again killing Whitebeard and taking his fruit? Shocking, am I right? But I do think one important thing to add here is that I do think with his dying breath, Whitebeard might try to inspire Ace to find the One Piece just like he originally did when he did give his famous The One Piece is Real line during Marineford. Like he might even go so far as tell Ace the importance of what Roger discovered or what Ace might need to find the One Piece. And so while Ace himself might not really know exactly what Whitebeard is talking about here, I honestly think that this would have a major impact on this young pirate. And while he initially might not want to follow in his father's footsteps, because remember, he really holds a grudge against Roger, I could see Ace ultimately deciding to inherit Whitebeard's dying will and kind of take his own approach to becoming Pirate King. Which honestly is incredibly ironic, as you might say right now as well, because Whitebeard originally actually wanted Ace to become Pirate King in the actual story as well, but the Emperor held Ace back by making him join his own crew. But now that Ace is actually on his own and still alive with no hole in him, he could very well be inspired to do exactly what Whitebeard originally wanted him to do in the first place. So yeah. Ace now has a new goal and a new sworn enemy in Blackbeard, but with Whitebeard out of the picture, we do have to consider who would fill the void in the Emperor ranks. And of course, it could just be Blackbeard like normal, or it could also be Ace, since technically he was the one who defeated Whitebeard in the first place. And so I would say, let's go with Ace becoming the next Emperor of the Sea, because come on, it's just so incredibly cool to imagine Ace as a Yonko. And of course, the first part of Ace Ace's new mission here to become Pirate King is to reach Love Tale. But the surprising thing that you have to remember is that very few people in the One Piece world in general actually know how to even find the directions to this legendary island. And so to start off, Ace would need to do one of two things. First, someone could tell him about the Poneglyphs and how you have to collect all four road Poneglyphs to reach Love Tale. And technically, this could be someone like Marco, who has been with Whitebeard long enough to most likely know about the Poneglyphs. Honestly though, that shortcut route kind of feels a little bit like a cheat, so let's go with the actual way that someone is supposed to find the final island of the Grand Line by reaching Lodestar Island first. In case you don't remember, this is the island where Roger and his crew originally first learned about the Poneglyphs. And so let's set Ace on that very same path, and let's say that the Yonko crew of the Spade Pirates will now sail past all of the other Yonko territories and reach the last official island of the Grand Line, Lodestar. And this is of course what we're gonna have to speculate quite a lot because we don't actually know yet what is on Lodestar Island. Could be a Poneglyph which explains all the other Poneglyphs, including the Road Poneglyph which does lead to Love Tail, or it could just be some sort of ancient civilization still living on Lodestar who help 
help guide people to find the One Piece and the Poneglyphs. But whatever the case may be, there is of course one other major problem for Ace and the Spade Pirates here, which is that even if Ace finds the Poneglyphs, he doesn't have anyone on his crew who can actually read and decipher them. And so to solve this problem, let's just imagine that Ace inherited his father's voice of all things ability, which lets Ace somehow understand what the Poneglyphs say, which honestly is fairly reasonable to assume that he would have that ability as well. And although this doesn't really solve the problem for good, it is good enough for them to start their journey collecting Poneglyphs back at the start of the Grand Line. Which now leads me to personally my favorite part maybe of this entire scenario, which is when Ace finally reunites with Luffy as a Yonko. And boy, this is going to be fun. Because while they probably wouldn't meet at Alabasta since the timing is way off here, Ace would still likely visit many of the same places that Luffy did early on in his journey as well. For example, there was a Poneglyph in Alabasta and another one on Fishman Island. So eventually, I would imagine that they meet up just like they did in the original story. But what's really interesting here though is that when these two originally met, they had this interesting conversation about becoming Pirate King. Obviously, that is Luffy's goal, but now Ace himself is on that same path as well, and he has a way bigger head start than his little brother. And so even though these two brothers are not technically rivals, I just think that Luffy is nowhere near strong enough at this point to become a serious threat to Ace. So Ace would likely just move on with his journey from here. Although there is actually one huge conflict that will need to be addressed at some point, because even though Ace has the voice of all things, it really isn't enough to truly translate the road poneglyphs and reach Laugh Tail. Remember, even Roger, who did kind of understand them, still needed someone who could actually read them in order to find the legendary island. And with Nico Robin being the only person that we know at this point in the story who could possibly read the poneglyphs, Ace would surely want her to be on his crew. And so there is a real chance that he could just try to take her or that Robin herself might actually want to go with Ace. But for now, let's assume that Ace doesn't know about Robin's ability to read the poneglyphs or that Robin is already invested in the straw hats. And so at this point, Ace simply moves on for now. And so Ace is well on his way now to becoming Pirate King, but this journey is going to lead him back to the new world, of course. And let's assume that this takes quite a long time, at least a year or two as the Spade Pirates continue their journey. And it's not like there's a map or anything that shows where all the important Poneglyphs are located, unless wait, maybe, maybe there is actually, which would be completely awesome, but then we don't know about that for sure. Also, keep in mind that we're missing some major world events here as well, like no Marine Fort, as we said earlier, which also means no normal time skip for the Straw Hat crew. Although I could imagine Luffy and his crew would still need some sort of training arc in order to survive in the new world at any cost. But still, all of this means that as Ace is collecting the Poneglyphs and searching for Left Tail, he would 100% at some point need to eventually fight Big Mom and Kaido, since both of them possess two of the road Poneglyphs. And before that, I think it's very reasonable to assume that Ace also somehow finds his way to Zoe and was able to get a copy of the road Poneglyph there as well. I mean, I'm not really sure how that would happen since the Spade Pirates don't really have a mink on their crew, but who knows, maybe they got a new crewmate along the way who is a mink, or maybe they just use their connections with their friends in Wano to find someone who can actually take them there. But with that out of the way, he now actually does have to go and face Big Mom and Kaido. And certainly, the Spade Pirates themselves are not all that powerful powerful yet, which would mean that Ace would need to basically be strong enough to take on the entire Yonko crew. Which, you know, I don't know if Ace is that strong, which means that it makes perfect sense for Ace to team up with another pirate who has the same goal. Oh, I don't know, you know, maybe someone like Luffy. That's right, because by this time, the Straw Pirates would most likely have entered the new world. And you might now think that it is cheating for them to team up, but we already know that Luffy teamed up with a lot of pirates to take down Kaido, so I do think it's fair for Luffy and Ace to work together to defeat the current Empress. Plus, as you know, Ace already has ties to Wano from his time there early on in his pirate career, so let's just say that instead of Luffy teaming up with Kit and Law, Ace joins the party to take down these two Yonko. This could either happen separately, first on Whole Kick Island, then in Wano, or the Empress could team up like they did during the actual Wano arc. And honestly, I don't really think that it matters who fights who at this point, but the important thing is that with their combined forces and the people of Wano, Luffy and Ace should be strong enough at this point to take down Kaido and Big Mom. But 
the major and unavoidable problem is coming up next though because at this point both ace and luffy have three road poneglyphs ace is a legitimate yonko and luffy has just awakened his gear five however luffy has one really major advantage over ace nico robin because certainly at this point ace would realize that the voice of all things simply isn't enough to figure out how to get to love tail he probably needs to know exactly what the road poneglyphs say so he desperately needs someone on his crew who can actually read them. Now, there is this guy to be fair, but I kind of doubt that he would want to leave Wano, so that just leaves one person who can read them. And now, of course, at this point, I would doubt that Robin would want to go with Ace, but if Ace truly is determined to become Pirate King, then he will stop at nothing to fulfill his goal, which ultimately means that these two crews will have to clash at some point. Which, yeah, I know, is shocking, but that's what it's gonna take to become Pirate King. It even might might happen between Luffy and Shanks if we're being honest and I can just imagine that Luffy and Ace going all out against each other is a thing that they would do. Ace's flames would be extremely powerful at this point, he's basically like a full on fire god but Luffy also now has his gear 5 powers which as we've seen can let him take out even the strongest of characters. So it's really hard to say how a battle of this sort would go but in the end I do seriously doubt that they would go all the way to killing each other, I mean they are brothers others of course. In fact, let's be real, they might even decide to end this fight in one of the most controversial ways possible. Let me explain. If you go back to the arc just after Skypiea, we were introduced to the concept of the Davy back fight. Now, this is a real pirate competition in the One Piece world where pirate crews can challenge each other in order to steal members from each other's crews. And yeah, as silly as that arc actually was, it really does seem like pirates take this extremely seriously and there's even even speculation that the legendary pirate Rox de Zebek used the Davy back fight in order to gather his impressive crew. So anyways, you might be wondering now, what exactly is even a Davy back fight in case you skip that arc, which, you know, no shame on that. Well, again, we've only seen this one in the story, but it did involve a three-stage competition. First, a boat race around an island, a game called Groggy Ring, which is kind of like soccer, except that one player in each team is the actual ball. And finally, a one-on-one -on -one duo where the person who gets knocked out of the ring first loses. And of course, the winner of these events gets to take members from the other person's crew. Now, we weren't sure if this is how every single Davy backfight actually works since we've only seen one in the entire story, but for the sake of this video, let's assume that Ace and the Spade Pirates would win this event in the end and Nico Robin is forced to join Ace's crew. In fact, we could even go as far as to say that the entire Straw Hats are forced to join the Spade Pirates, but I'm not actually sure if Luke Luffy would ever be willing to work under someone else, even his brother. So for now, let's just assume that Robin is the only one that joins the Spade Pirates. And that means that Ace now has a clear path towards becoming Pirate King. All he has to do is to find the last fourth Poneglyph, which is likely being protected by the Emperor Shanks and the Giants in Elbaf, and then make his way to Love Tail. And while that's no easy task, we do know that Ace already knows Shanks. So while I don't think that Shanks would just give Ace the road Poneglyph, if we can imagine that Luffy would somehow obtain it from Elba, then the same applies to Ace, I think. There's just one other big, big problem though here, because in all this time, we still have the massive threat of Blackbeard, who will very likely be Ace's final challenge before becoming Pirate King. But with all that's gone on in the story, plus Ace's extra motivation to take down the person who killed Whitebeard, I just have to imagine that Ace as Roger's son would come out on top here fairly convincingly. Which just goes to show how much insane potential Fire Fist Ace, the potential future Pirate King, actually has in the story. Although this also brings up another character with insanely untapped potential, because if you've ever thought that it is criminally unfair that Luffy and Zoro get all the attention from the Straw Hats, you're not alone. Because Sanji is just as deserving as the other two, so to hype him up a little bit more even, I figured out the perfect devil fruit to make Sanji into a true god tier level fighter. And you can watch that video right here. Thanks for watching, and I hopefully see you in the next one.